Hello and welcome to this India Today special where we are joined today by a special guest from the United States, one of the world's leading virologists, Dr. Robert Gallo. He's the Homer and Martha Gudelsky Distinguished Professor in Medicine, Co-Founder and Director, Institute of Human Virology at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and also one of the scientists who discovered the links between HIV and AIDS, widely credited for that path-breaking discovery of HIV virus at the time. And he is here today to talk on what else but the virus of our times, which is the coronavirus. Appreciate your joining us, Dr. Gallo. There's a lot of talk of a third wave at the moment in India, another wave across the world. Remember the second wave crippled our health system in this country, thousands of lives were lost. How fast, Dr. Gallo, do you believe there will be another wave? Is there a gap that will enable us to give us more breathing space between two waves, uh, Dr. Gallo? Not, not, not that I have in my head or in my hands, and I'm not the best one for modeling. So I have to answer you, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to only reports that are coming from India and then modeling people in India that predict it's coming. I don't know. So are you saying there will be more waves, uh, but you're saying you can't tell us when they will come. That's impossible to predict, but there will be more waves in India and across the world. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Uh, a lot of experts, though, are saying, uh, uh, or many of them are saying, uh, Dr. Gallo, that if and when there is another wave, uh, children and those under 18 could be affected, uh, as much of the adult population might then, by then be vaccinated, hopefully. Do you see any merit in that argument that children will be vulnerable because they've not been inoculated in any future wave? Yeah, I do. And the problem is we really don't know the long-term effects yet. And there is, you know, some things, some reports that occur that tell us that you can get long term problems with the brain or cardiovascular, even with a very mild infection. So this we have to watch very carefully. So, sure, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't just dismiss the young people as having no no risk here. I wish we could vaccinate everybody tomorrow. Usually people will start with the high risk groups those that are in the front line of caring for patients or caring for yeah caring for people in mm -hmm. homes get obviously hospitals and then police workers and people that are really in contact and doing their job with almost anyone so you you have to hit those people first the, the health where all the health workers for example mm -hmm. and in america we got hit hard in the homes for people that are elderly mm -hmm. and then you remember the when the epidemic hit north italy they had a huge problem around milan where doctors and nurses were dying like crazy so you have to go with the at-risk population first of course and then you go for the next and the next and if we have enough we go for everybody we can as fast as we can now, Dr. Gallo, it's believed that one of the reasons we suffered in this country in the second wave is we didn't pick up the Delta variant in time. There was not enough genome sequencing and that really was a major concern. Is that critical to get ahead of any new wave in any new variant that might emerge? Because there's already talk of the mutant Delta plus now spreading. So to get ahead of mutants and variants, is it critical to invest in genome sequencing above all else? Well, you must know that you regard India as, um, you know, as problems and everybody has problems. You regard parts of India as problems with poverty. Um, so do many nations. But let me say this, India has a lot of talent mm -hmm. and a lot of talent in medicine. And they have the real capacity to be among the top tier in this kind of research for public health. Mm -hmm. They can do it. You people can do it. Your people have strong biochemistry, good virology, good immunology, and they can make the diagnostics. They just have to decide we're going to do it and to collaborate and cooperate between the different mm -hmm. regions of India. Of recent years, I'm more familiar with the people in Kerala before I was more familiar with other parts of India. 
but now I've been rather focused on people from Kerala and really, they're really talented. So there's no doubt in my mind they can do it if they just pull the app together. You, yes, of course, you're going to have to follow the sequencing of viruses as they become aware. And as you become aware of, of uh, outbreaks, you'll have to know what that sequence is and how it's moving and who's it infecting. And you got to get the population of studies, social studies at the same time, the science studies, good diagnostics, good sequencing, and plenty of it. What can I say? You know the answer to this. And the audience that is following this, who have followed the pandemic, know this already too. You must do it. Mm -hmm. yep. You cannot rely on others to do the, that part for you. India is going to have to tackle it. And I think you do. I mean, it's just that you're going to have to increase it, right? Yes, I mean, we, we all have... went through serious yeah. problems here. We all learned from the serious problem. This, every virus presents different kind of challenge. You, you, I mean, our last pandemic is still occurring, HIV, but not for easy to catch, but a hard to catch virus. But once you catch it, you're going to die if you don't get therapy and get to the right doctor. Not true with this. It doesn't kill the high percentage of people. I think it's about 2 to 3 percent. 2.5. The first SARS was worse, 6 percent. And the other coronavirus, MERS, was worse than that, 9 to 10 percent. So this is not so fatal as those but it causes more chronic illness things that are still around after they think they're better in many people symptoms are coming back or something like it so we want to reduce the infection and though the vaccines are much better at preventing disease than preventing infection nonetheless they lower the amount of virus so that disease doesn't occur and they reduce the transmission so that eventually, like you're seeing in America, it's sliding down to almost nothing. Will it stay? I don't know. Will a new variant occur in America that we don't have on top of yet? I don't know. But I'm not so worried. Because if it does, the messenger RNA vaccines will be there right away. Quick. You know, you've spoken about the messenger RNA vaccines, the mRNA vaccine. Now, many are describing this as the great revolution. Anecdotally, they seem to give better protection against variants. Do you believe, therefore, that the future of vaccines are the mRNA vaccines and they are they protect people better against the variants? The messenger RNA vaccines are truly a major advance. We did not expect they would be this good. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. Certainly, I did not. I thought they would be degraded too easily because RNA is very susceptible to degradation. But worked by a few people, chemists, over a long period of time. I think, if I'm not mistaken, at least one came from Hungary, has made the RNA protected. And when you have it protected so it can get into the cell safely and not be destroyed, this is a powerful means of being able to produce the exact protein you want in the exact natural state. Mm -hmm. And this is a relatively easy virus to get a vaccine to. It's not hard. Acute viruses are usually easy compared to something chronic like herpes viruses or like retroviruses such as HIV, very hard. This is, becomes a much simpler problem. And the great advantage of the RNA vaccine is if a mutant comes, you can just change the sequence to that mutant and cover it. So I'm not too worried in but the Dr. end. But Dr. Gallo, the fear is that a virus uh you know, as it mutates, could it attain a deadlier and more contagious form. Is that true that every variant could actually become more contagious or over time, the other way around, that they should become less deadly and thereby slowly uh, coexist with human beings? Which, which way do you see these variants and mutants going over the next year or two? Of course, that's possible. They undergo genetic, all viruses undergo genetic change, yes. RNA viruses, mm -hmm. as opposed to DNA viruses, that is, viruses that contain DNA as their genetic information, mutate less in general. Viruses that have RNA, like this virus does, like HIV, like influenza, polio, they mutate more. Okay, And the more they replicate, the more they reproduce, mm -hmm. the more you don't stop them, the more they'll mutate. 
Mm -hmm. And as I said, of course, when you put immune pressure on them, it forces them more in a certain direction. But you don't know that direction is bad. And you know the overall effect is good because if you have a, a, a pot of viruses like this and you diminish it to that, well, of course, it's much better and more contained and will mutate in the end. There'll be less, less mutants. These arguments to diminish the importance of vaccine, in my view, are silly and they're harmful. You know, there's also this debate over herd immunity. How long do you really believe it would take to get herd immunity through vaccines and exposure to the virus? Do you see, therefore, just simply a wave after wave coming for the next 12 months? Or do you think that one, two years, the virus uh, from now will have, will have run its course and we'll be back to normal? Do you want to set any timelines, Dr. Gallo? I think it could be back to normal even sooner than that. Mm -hmm. It depends on our behavior and success in vaccinating the world and in the people taking the vaccines and in still being careful mm -hmm. because we just have to watch how this develops. And if some variant comes out that starts to escape the vaccine, then the companies that are producing the messenger RNA vaccines have to double up their activity and make new vaccines for that variant until we stamp this out. Mm -hmm. I believe we can, and I believe we will. But I can't say, put a date on it, but I'm optimistic that a year from now, we are talking in a happier situation, That's even though India is currently facing the next surge. This is important to us. I was at, I've had telephone calls with Indian colleagues twice in the last, once a week for the last few weeks, and we're trying to see what alternative things we can do to help. You know, it's reassuring, Dr. Gallo, that you're saying that things will be better a year from now. Uh, let me turn to another issue, uh, which I thought you might be able to speak on. There are calls within the U.S., outside, across the world, for an investigation to find out if the virus that has caused this pandemic came from a Wuhan lab in China. Shi Zheng Li, the top bat coronavirus researcher at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, is someone you've known. Uh, She's defended her institute. She says there is no evidence and lamented the filth being poured on an innocent scientist, as she called it. Having worked with her, what do you make out of the lab leak theory, uh, Dr. Gallo? Well, I haven't actually worked with her, but I know her work, and she's part of the Global Virus Network, mm -hmm. which I co-founded in uh, 2011, of which India has a few different uh, groups participating as well. It's a global network of virologists. She is one of them. But I never actually worked with her. I, I too, seen no evidence, certainly that it's laboratory created. Is it possible that it's a laboratory leak? Right. That is always possible. It's possible that anytime you have a new epidemic coming out and there's virology people, virus mm -hmm. experts working on a virus, it's possible that mm -hmm. you have a lab leak that cannot be eliminated, but there is no evidence or proof for that. And there's strong evidence against it being laboratory made, despite several false claims by some scientists early on and even sometimes recently that they had to abandon. I don't know any serious scientist now who thinks it's created in a laboratory but we cannot rule out a laboratory leak, okay? Mm -hmm. Personally, I don't think we'll ever find that out, and I don't think it's worth wasting time on. Let's assume it's a lab leak. Let's assume the opposite, that it came directly from a bat or another animal into humans. And let's take action on both scenarios. Uh, it, it's the right to know, Dr. Gallo. Surely the world deserves to know what really happened. Recently, a Vanity Fair report quoting government documents said scientists in the U.S. were under pressure to discount the lab theory, not to pursue that angle. The belief is there. There has been this attempt at a cover-up. That's what I want to know. What, has there been a cover-up in your view? No. Well, I don't know. Let me say, I don't know. Okay. I don't know everything. And if Vanity Fair said that, Vanity Fair must be more expert than most people in virology because I've never heard anyone say that. Certainly it has not happened to me. I'm under zero pressure for anything. 
-hmm. and so is our Institute of Human Virology in Baltimore. And if we were under pressure, we would tell you, we, this is America. This is not a totalitarian country. We can, we are completely free to say what we think. If it's uh, unless we're starting um, to cause, uh, you know, crazy stuff and causing trauma to people. But if a scientist is under pressure, he can say so. What's going to happen to him? He's not going to go to jail, as in some countries. Mm -hmm. What one? So that's that's simply non nonsense. Okay. It, or else it comes from some virologist who experienced it. I've never heard that before, ever. Okay. Dr. Gallo, one final question. You're speaking today as one of the world's leading virologists, but to this entire issue of the lab leak theory, there's a political angle. Former President Donald Trump used to call it a Chinese virus. There is some element of anger both in India and across the world over the way the Chinese have handled the whole issue. Do you accept that, that this issue has been handled very poorly? You're right, and I don't think anybody took Trump seriously. Mm -hmm. And that's not what Biden says, and that's not what any previous American president said. And there is no political pressure to make it so, although there are some politicians that talk as if they're experts when they usually don't know what they're talking about. And that's true in a number of countries. Let me leave it there. But in, our country is big. And there's a lot of politicians. And there are a lot of scientists. Let me leave it there, Dr. Gallo. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you, uh, getting a sense from you on from your unique perspective there in Baltimore. One of the world's leading virologists, Dr. Robert Gallo, speaking to us on COVID-19, what lies ahead, and of course, the Chinese lab leak theory. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for watching.